So there's tons of farming methods in the brand new Bounty of Blood DLC. Of course, the level cap is now 60, which means that you have to refarm quite a ton of your items again. I really hope that Gearbox isn't going to increase it any further than level 60, because I think that now we have the perfect balance. But in this video, I want to go over some of the best farming methods, as well as a few secret ones that you can get in the Bounty of Blood DLC. And of course, towards the end of this video, I'm also going to go over a method that actually something that you can only do after finishing the main story so it's a bit spoilerish but I'm going to try to avoid everything story related and only go over that method instead so as always hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and let's jump right into it let's begin with some of the earliest treasures that you can get in the new DLC and these are called the good prospects they are basically crew challenges there's going to be six of them in total so one for each of the maps on the new planet of Gehenna but the first treasure challenge that you're going to find is as early as the town of Vestige, you're going to reach this saloon in the town center, but you're actually going to want to head over on the main street up until you reach the end of the building on the right side. And on that right side, on one of the outer balconies on the second floor, is where that treasure chest is in, but in order to reach it, you're going to want to go on the opposite side up until you reach this back end alley with these two trash bins. From here, simply climb up and jump on the second balcony, the one with the stairs, climb up the stairs up until you reach the rooftop and from here on just walk on the railway that's made out of wood up until you reach its end and here you will see that you just reached the balcony. So jump on the balcony and congratulations this is the first location for the first treasure chest. And this is basically how you're going to be able to find all of these good prospects. You're going to have to do these jumping puzzles so they do involve a bit of like looking around and paying attention to your surroundings but no they don't respawn if you reload your game if that was what you were wondering. Now the second type of loot chest that you're going to be able to find also quite hidden are these Saros caches, basically these big drawers that will spawn several legendary items in them, or at the very least they have a high chance to do so. But the first time you reach one of these it's very likely that you will notice that it is locked and the reason for that is because you first need to interact with its corresponding Saros log, which basically looks something like this. It's a pedestrian with a book on top and if you interact with it you're going to have a dialogue sequence that will both reveal the location on the map of the next Saros cache as well as unlocking it for you. So that is why I first recommend you to go in and interact with the logs first so that you both have that Saros cache reveal for you on the map and it's going to make things much easier compared to you having to find them manually. But once you do that you can go again back to it and unlock it and it's going to have an even higher chance to spawn even several legendary items for you. Now there's going to be way more than six of these compared to the previous caches so in this case you can even find several of these on the same map. Um, I definitely recommend you just like in the previous case to keep these for level 60 so that you can get the most out of them and don't have to throw up the loot. And again just like in the case of the previous treasures these cannot be reset once you relog your save file so just be mindful of that. But with that being said and done let's go over some really awesome farming spots that you're going to want to take part in and these are all going to be related to a number of bounties of course bounties are a huge deal in the new DLC there's going to be several bounties with several enemies that drop specific loot but they also spawn like several badass enemies and even a bunch of other loot chests that you can reset and unlock time and time again now the first farming spot or actually the first couple of farming spots can be found in Asheville Peaks it's basically the second map that you're going to reach once you exit the town of Vestige the the easiest way to start is basically from the safe point in the middle of the map. So basically the first one is going to be south to it, we're going to farm Garrickton Lock, he is one of the bounties, and the second one is going to be north of it, which is Han Mar, um, the second bounty that we're going to farm. The first one, Garrickton Lock, you simply head over south again from where you came from, you're going to see that there's these bunch of buildings, just jump and avoid all of the enemies, and you're going to reach this back alley with a bunch of houses surrounding it, and here you're going to see a ton of enemies spawning, including Garrett and Locke, 
from this house right here in the back. Now the enemies have a high chance to spawn legendary in these locations, especially since this is a bounty that um, also spawns several legendaries himself, including the brand new Robin Skull shotgun that seems to be spawning quite a bit from Garrick Dunlock, but there's also several other badasses that will have a high chance to spawn other types of legendaries in there as well. Once you're done with that, there are three caches in the area that you can open up and they all have decent chances to spawn legendaries. The first one is going to be in the house, there's this weapon drawer that you can open and it does have a pretty decent chance to spawn a legendary weapon. The other two are going to be on the outside near the edge, there's going to be on the right side an outhouse that can also spawn an enemy. If it does spawn an enemy, I've observed that um, it also has a high chance to spawn a legendary weapon, so definitely grab it too. And then there's on the left side a Jacob's treasure chest that you should open, which also has a decent chance for another weapon. Now the second one is going to be Hadden Mar, which is going to be north of the waypoint. Um, it's basically in this like kind of closed area, there is like a bathhouse in there, but the way you're going to want to reach this is basically go on to the left side. So basically you're going to be able to like climb up on this ladder over this building. Once you reach that spot you're going to see that there's this tower and on the right side in the entrance you're going to see that there's another launching pad. Use it to reach the top of the tower and here is where you will find the next bounty, Hanmar as well as several other badass enemies and regular enemies as well. So take down all of the enemies including the main bounty and he is going to have a rather decent chance to spawn the brand new NARP sniper rifle which as I've said in a previous video is one of my favorite looking weapons in the new DLC. But once that's done, collect all of the weapons and head over to the right side of the area from where you just came from. You will see that there's this green crystal blocking off your path. Just kick it in and then congratulations you just found a brand new chest that you can open. But there's also going to be a second one opposite of it on the left side. It's basically this weapon drawer that again has a pretty decent chance to spawn another legendary and that's basically it with the area. This brings us to the next farming spot which is going to be in the Blast Plains, a different map this time around. It's going to be located on this side of the map to a bounty called the Bronsons. Now what makes this farming method so amazing is the fact that this bounty actually features several mini bosses or several targets so to speak, about four or five of them if I'm not mistaken. And they also have, all of them have high chances to actually spawn their own legendaries which means that you're going to have more chances to get more loot and there's also a ton of enemies in the area including badasses that you're going to want to take down as well. Now some of the weapons that I saw dropping from this location are the brand new Brightside shotgun as well as the Satisfaction rocket launcher but I'm pretty sure that all of the new world drops in the new DLC can drop from this location which is why it makes it such a good farming spot. Now this brings us to the next section of this guide and it is going to include some slight spoilers so you have been warned only proceed if you have already finished that or if you don't really care about spoilers it's not really that big but I wanted to give the warning nonetheless. So the first one is going to be the brand new boss that has been added called the Quartermaster. You can find him in the Bloodson Canyon basically at the very end of the map. Now unfortunately there is no teleportation point right next to it but there is a save point which will make reloading your save file really easy as you can immediately jump into the fight. But he is one of the best farms I was able to find in the new DLC if not even the best for several reasons. First of all because it's a really easy encounter especially if you use something like the redistributor that kind of bounces bullets between the targets so keep them close by and just attack them. Once you have done that and you kept them close by so you can make all of those bounces you're going to see that there's quite a nice loot explosion coming from the boss and at the very least I'm seeing at least four or five legendary drops every time I'm killing this boss. One of the biggest drops from here is of course the Miscreant Pistol which is one of its signature drops. It's one of the new weapons added in the new DLC and one of my favorite weapons that I'm going to cover in a later video. But otherwise it can also drop almost every other weapon that has been added in the new DLC. You have the save point right next to it which is going to make this farm really really easy. This of course brings us to none other than the very last farming method in the new DLC which as I've said in the beginning of the video is something that you can only do after finishing the main story. So after being done with all of those events you're going to be given the key to the bank of the town of Vestige which basically is this one right here, the game even points you to that. I first suggest you to make a permanent backup of that save file. If you're on the console try to upload it 
to the cloud, maybe you have PS Plus, definitely go in and make a copy of that, maybe even put it on your stick drive, but if you're on PC, it's even easier, just go in and like archive it and put it in a different location. And the reason for that is because once you open up the bank, you're going to see that there are several chests inside of it, and yes, just like the chest at the end of the main story in the game, these also 100% guarantee a legendary drop, or at the very least, they did for me. So basically, just go in, open them all up, see if you got anything good, if you didn't, just replace the save file with the previous one that you made a hard copy of, and you can repeat this up until you get the best possible loot out of it. And I also recommend smashing all of those boxes, since they all give you a ton of money as well. By the time I was finished with the DLC, I think that I made about 40 million, maybe even 50 million dollars, which was absolutely insane, and I was able to buy all of the bank slots and inventory slots that I was lacking previously. Nonetheless, these are all of the farming methods that I was able to gather in the brand new DLC. Of course, go ahead and post down below if you found any other amazing farming spots in there that I might have missed. In the meantime, as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and peace.